I'm Clément Tussio, and I'm the product manager of case management and service intelligence. So it's my third release in this live in a, in a row, and I'm very happy to be here, Mike. Glad to have you back. So the first thing we delivered uh, in case management is some case feed enhancements. Mm -hmm. And, and the first one is we did a specific uh, UI treatment yes. to differentiate what is internal and external. So orange background means it's externally visible, white background means it's internal. Okay. So very easy for an agent to scan the feed and identify customer facing communication. Yes. Uh, second thing we, we delivered is uh, we now display HTML in the feed. So any email containing uh, inline images mm -hmm. or formatted text will render directly in the feed. Beautiful. No need to you know, reply to the email to see, to see what's in there. And the last thing we, we delivered in the case feed announcement is now feed items are editable. Mm -hmm. So if you did any mistake or typo, um, you can edit and change what you type. Uh, you don't have to delete the post anymore. Excellent. Second thing we delivered is some macros announcements. So remember in spring 15, we delivered uh, macros. It mm -hmm. was the first release. Absolutely. So macros is a way to automate the console. So you can perform multiple action in one click. Uh, so we continued our work with macros. And, and the first thing we delivered is now macros can control the knowledge components, the knowledge mm -hmm. one components. Mm -hmm. So what that means is a macro can uh, actually search for articles can attach the article to the case and also insert the article into the email publisher. All that in one click. One click. One click. And in Spring 15, we had a limitation where uh, a macros could only replace some text. Mm -hmm. So now macros can add text at the end of text field and insert at cursor for long text fields. So what that means is, um, you know, for social publisher, you need to keep, you know, this at mention mm -hmm. to post on Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. So now we can support macros for, for social, which is, uh, which is uh, something our customer wanted to, wanted to see. Yeah. Uh, what else? So now the search is server side, which means that we don't have this limit of 400 macros anymore in the widget. You can search directly on the server. We don't load all the macros in this widget anymore. Uh, we now display the most recently used macros in the widget. Mm -hmm. So if you have some repetitive macros that you use time after time, you don't have to search for it. It's in the widget and it's ready. And um, we have new user permissions. So you know that macros can be uh, two different types. Yes. You have macros that can be undone, which mm -hmm. means they don't send an email, they don't update the case. It's just basically change things in the UI, mm -hmm. but uh, the agent has to review it and to submit or send the email. Yeah. And you have macros that submit, that cannot be undone, Absolutely. right? So now we have new, we have new icons uh, to identify both macros, mm -hmm. and we also have a new icon for bulk macros. Bulk macros. I know, I know macros, but bulk macros, explain. Yeah, so bulk macros is one of the key features we launched in summer. So now you can use exactly the same macros that you have uh, on your case, lead, or account, or contact, but you can use it from the list view. What that means is you can do some mass updates uh, on cases and, and, and mass communication as well, mass email. Wow. Fantastic use case is like you have a, a service outage or something like mm -hmm. that, and you want to, yeah, mass email your customer to let them know when it will be solved. So mm -hmm. it's very easy to use from a list view. And uh, so you can select up to 200 records at once, and the macro process will process it 10 by 10 mm -hmm. uh, until you get to 200. Wow, that sounds very powerful. Yeah, I, I will demo it in a minute. Excellent. And uh, so to, in summer 15, we support email instructions and any quick action. Mm -hmm. So we, we still have some gaps with like a community and, um, and another one that I will remember in a minute. But uh, uh, that's the one we support for now. Gotcha. Uh, and then uh, we have other announcements. The first one is for asset sharing. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we had to deliver this sharing set for assets so you can share assets on community, and on high volume portal for high volume portal users. So it's something that is delivered now. Wow. Um, so regarding SLAs, we now have an option to display actual hours uh, instead of business hours. A good example is let's say you have to, your SLAs, uh, basically your milestone has to be completed in eight business hours. Mm -hmm and you have defined eight business hours a day. Mm -hmm. Today in Salesforce, you can see, you will see eight hours remaining in your machine tracker. If you activate this option, you will see one day. 
So it's, it's, it's like it's a better way for the agents to understand when exactly the milestone will, uh, will happen, especially yeah. when it's a long time ahead. Excellent. Yeah. And the last thing is something uh, our customer requested for a long time is a way to append the user signature after replies and mm -hmm. not at the end of the thread. Yes. So you have a way now to, uh, to activate that. You have an option to, to make that happen. Excellent. I know a lot of people have been asking for that. Yeah. It's something we, we had to deliver. But as we, as we have uh, the case feed, uh, we have more flexibility to deliver this kind of, this kind of options. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, so I'm going to switch to the demo, and we're going to do a little laptop switch as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, so maybe before I talk about case management, I'd like to highlight mm -hmm. real quick uh, some uh, ser some uh, console features that we deliver in Summer 15 as well. Absolutely. The first one is um, so we have a new list view, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, more modern. So it's, it's in pilot right now, but if you want to use it, you can uh, contact support to activate it. Okay. Uh, and uh, the goal is like uh, to invest in Zaltis view to make it better for service. Mm -hmm. okay, so that's the first step to uh, improve the, the list view experience. Uh, second thing I want to show you is we have two new options for tabs. The first one is a way to pin tabs. So you, you have the same kind of options in Chrome today. When you pin a tab, it just takes less room. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's certainly a, a, a tab that you want to, to keep open, but you, you, you just want to uh, yeah, basically uh, reduce the size there so you can, you can pin it. And the second thing we have is now you can bookmark tabs. It was a, a big request as well from yeah. our customers. And if you bookmark a tab, what that means is in the history footer components, we have this bookmark tab where you can see all the items you bookmarked. Mm -hmm. So if you want to bookmark an article, a, a case, a solution, or even you know, some kind of a custom tab, you can do it there and so, and so you can find it easily. Wow. Um, all right, so back to case management. Um, so this case is about uh, a customer who got an issue with his, uh, with his uh, camera. Mm -hmm. All his photos are blurry and so he sent an email to the support management, to the support email address. And the first thing you can see here is uh, the two colors you have in the feed. So the white one here is about a, a change status. It's not something we expose to customers, so it's white. Mm -hmm. And you have actually uh, the case creation and the email that is customer phishing, so it's orange. So I'm going to click on the email feed item. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, this customer sent me a nice screenshot of the issue he got with his, uh, with his photo. So everything is blurry, and I can see it from the feed now. I don't have to reply anymore, so it's much more integrated. Absolutely. That's very useful as well if you have some formatted text, like uh, if you send some app logs and, and things like that. It's much easier to see directly in the feed. And, and, and actually, Mike, I'd like to walk you through how an agent could solve that manually today. Please. Um, so if you want to respond to this customer, what you may want to do is to open the, the email publisher. And you may want to insert the company header, like a logo. So you need to click on the right mm -hmm. folder. You need to, to select uh, the right template. And here, I may want to use the header with the name of the company. And I have some merge field with the contact. Mm -hmm. But now. I may want to use knowledge to mm -hmm. answer this customer. And actually, I'm pretty confident that this issue comes from the fact that the lens is dirty. And I may, have, I may find actually some, uh, some articles about that. And as you can see here, I have a procedure that explains how to clean your lens and filters. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to review. OK, I have a procedure to clean it. All right, that's the one I want to use. And, uh, and actually, it's something we, uh, we delivered in spring. It's a way to insert this article in the email publisher directly from the component. So mm -hmm. here, I'm going to attach an, in, an email article with HTML. And as you can see, in the email publisher, I now have my header, I have my solution, I can review it, and I can send it. So it's a lot of clicks, right? You need yeah. to select the right uh, templates, you need to search, find the right article, attach it. What about doing all that with one macro, if you know there is oh, a solution God, yes. for that? So it so would be great, right? So, um, so basically, using macros, the first thing you notice is like you, you don't need to use your mouse. Uh, pressing escape, mm -hmm. I put the focus on the console. Pressing M, I open the macro widget. Okay. I'm going to search for a macro about, about uh, how to clean your lens. I find it there. And pressing sp uh, sp 
space, basically, I can open and look at the instructions, and it's going to do exactly the same thing that I just did manually. And when I'm ready, I just have to press Enter, and it basically did exactly the same thing that you just seen manually in one click and super fast. So we cut down the several minutes of manual clicking and pointing down to one click. Exactly. And, and exactly. And what is new with Summer 15 is like, as you can insert, you can combine information from multiple sources, mm -hmm. template, quick text, articles. You do, you do it one time in your macro and it's ready to go for any agent. Wow. Super powerful. And so when I'm ready, I review my solution and I can send the email. And same thing here is going to send the email, and the solution is available with inline images, formatted text, and pictures in the feed directly. That is very cool. Yeah, one of the key nice work from, uh, from, the, from the team, uh, if they look at me. <laughs> 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 All right, so let's, uh, let's move on. Um, I'd like to show you something else as well. Is, um, so back to my list view here. I'm going to change my list view, and I'm going to access another case, which is about a service outage here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open that case. And same thing here, I have a macro to solve this issue. So I'm just going to open the macro widget. I'm going to remove what's in the search macro. And I have a macro for service outage, which is going to send an information to the customer mm -hmm. and maybe update the case status and close the tab because we have a close tab function as well. So wow. pressing enter just doing the same thing, sending the emails this time. Mm -hmm. So it's not in a review mode. I know exactly what's going to be sent, so I send it, and it closed the tab as well. But you know, Mike, when you have a service outage, you don't have one case, right? You don't have just one case. You have a lot of case. A lot. So I'm going to refresh this list view, and actually I have tons of case with a service outage. And do you think I'm going to open case by case and, and just like apply the same macro in again and again? Well, maybe before this release you might. Yeah, before this release you might. So here, I, I'm just going to select the case I want, I want to, uh, to uh, where I want to apply the macro. Mm -hmm. And same procedure here. I don't have to go in another place. It's in the same widget. Pressing Escape, I have already my macro in focus. Pressing Enter, I have a security here. Mm -hmm. Like, do you want to apply this macro in 15 records? Because that's, that's a powerful feature, right? Yes. You, can, you can send communication to many customers. So you need to be sure you want to apply it before, before going forward. And then pressing Enter when you're ready is going to process the records 10 by 10 in the list view and do exactly the same thing that we just did on a single macro. So it's going to first send the email and change the status mm -hmm. and save both things. And when it's ready, the macro widget collapse. And then I'm done. Wow. So, I mean, just with a few minutes of setup there, you are saving more time than I can calculate on the fly here for our customers. Exactly, and we have a lot of different use cases here. Sending email, so mass updating the case. So you can have a macro that just you know categorize the case with like the priority, the product. So you can you can do it at, at your own flavors, mm -hmm. but it's a huge amount of time uh, uh, gain. And and we have customers in the past that customized a lot of solution to have the same, same kind of behavior. But here it's it's native. It's native and yeah. it's beautiful. Fantastic. So I'm going to switch back to my slides, actually, to talk a bit about the roadmap. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a little, another little switch. All right. So case management roadmap. Um, so it's, it's, coming, uh, it's coming next, Safe Harbor, of course. Mm -hmm. So we'll do some uh, uh, enhanced filtering. So today in the case feed, you don't have any choice in the, in the filters available. Mm -hmm. That's the one by default. Yeah. But you may want, as a customer, to have your own filters with your own label and, and maybe combine filter together, like to display. I want to see email and I want to see case comments combined together. Or I want to, I want to see just one custom object, uh, which is a case child, for example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you will be able to create your own filters and, and add it to the layout. You may want as well to see only what is public and private. So basically, you will have in the setup a new way to, uh, to define your filters and add it to the layout. Wow. Second one is really cool as well. Today, uh, with lookup components in the sidebars, you, um, you know, when the relationship is not done with a contact, for example, you have nowhere really to, to link it from the sidebar. But in winter, you should be able to search for a contact uh, directly, from, directly from the sidebar. Mm -hmm. And if you don't find it, you'll be able to create it and to update it from the sidebar still wow. using a quick action. So what that means is you won't have to think about should I create the case first or the contact first? 
you, when the case is there, you can do much more action on, on related entities of the, of the case. Wow. It's very, very nice. And the other thing is, in quick action, you have a, a page layout in there. Mm -hmm. So you can display one column or two columns. And we'll respect that in the sidebars. Today, with the lookup component, if the sidebar is uh, very wide, uh, you will display like different columns, you know, like up to uh, three or four. And, and then with quick action, we'll respect the number of columns you define. So um, if, you want, if you just want one column, mm -hmm. we'll get more room for the value of the yeah. field. So each customer will be able to, to define what they want there. Uh, next is uh, a macros will be able to transfer ownership because we are going to add the owner field on quick action. Mm -hmm. So transferring record is going to be available in, in, uh, in winter. Excellent. We'll have a feed-based layout for asset where you, where, you will, where you will be able to use some quick action in there. Um, and, um, and we have macros integration as well with a lookup component in the sidebars. If you, if you know, if you wants to select a template and mm -hmm. modify some values of the case or the contact or the account or the asset in the sidebars in one click, you'll be able to do it. Uh, we'll do some file widget enhancement as well. Uh, okay. The goal actually is to be able to do some drag and drop from the widget to the email publisher uh, and, um, and also to improve how to access the attachment in this, in this file widget. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a new REST API uh, for a, a Web2Ks REST API. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have the same flavors as what you have on Web2Ks, you, you will have an API for that. Okay. And, and finally, um, you will, 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 now, will now display the stop time on milestone. How much mm -hmm. time the case was stopped during the milestone life cycle. So you may want to know exactly how much time the agent worked on that case versus waited for a partner or waited for mm -hmm. a customer to reply. Wow, that's very impressive. That's, that's, uh, we have a very product productive team and, uh, and uh, that's, um, that's very fortunate. The service team is stepping up. Yeah, trying to. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for that. You just showed us some very, very powerful new uh, new features for all of our service cloud customers. They have to have a lot to say right now. Elna, I mean, what's Twitter saying? Well, I tell you, compliments on your demo environment that we have some folks who want to make theirs look just like yours. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We're going to get those instructions out the door there. And definitely editing posts and comments has been a theme today. I think it's it's particularly useful for service, yeah. you know, especially in a fast-paced environment, you know, correct that quick little typo that you accidentally sent to a customer, right? Yeah. <laughs> so definitely a uh, lot of excitement around that. And, um, you know, bulk macros, that, that's one that's I think people are perking up on that one as well. And, you know, that seems like a very powerful feature. So what if you don't want all of your customer service reps to have access mm. to that feature? Can you decide who's able to use that versus a single macro? Yeah, that, that's, that's a very good question, actually. And uh, actually, we thought about that. We understand it's a very powerful macro, and, and, and you, you may not want to provide it to each support agent. So what we did is we created a, a, a new user profile permission so depending on uh, the profile of the agent, you will be able to define, we're able to do some bulk macros. But as I said earlier, also, also a way to say uh, which agent is able to perform a macro that submits, that send emails and, and update the case or create case. So, so yeah, we have a, um, a permission in profile for that. Mm -hmm.